So for project three, we decided that we were going to add on to our project two, which was originally an LED spectrometer. And clearly from our title, we decided to add on a sun tracker. Our goal for the project was to be able to take data on the sun's black body spectrum throughout the course of an entire day. This sort of thing is tied into research in the sense that spectrometers can uh, are are used to measure chemical and physical properties of the atmosphere. Uh, an example of this is chance and correct development of an improved solar reference spectrum. Um, they use ground and balloon based solar measurements uh, to achieve this. So from project two, uh, this is this is where we this is what we had. We had our spectrometer circuit. We had calibration code from Mathematica uh, to to calibrate the the values that we were reading in from our circuit, and then obviously we had Arduino code to actually collect that data. So that at that point uh, we began project three to and adding on the Sun Tracker. So with the addition of the Sun Tracker, this is what our, our overall schematic looks like. We have over here, we have the new addition. We have some photoresistors uh, and resistors here that are uh, that become voltage dividers that we measure in to the Arduino here. And then based on the values that we read into the Arduino, uh, we can uh, output controls to our servo motors here. And again, this is the old circuit uh, with our LEDs here and op amps and our, our Arduino for taking in the data. So this is a photo of uh, the actual tracker circuit. Here we have the output to the servo motors, and here we have the input from the photoresistors. Right here is our, our sun tracker. This is the actual device that uh, with the servo motors and the photoresistors attached to it and everything. So essentially the way this works is that we had PVC piping here that we cut to, uh, to cast shadows on photoresistors and based on the position of, of the tracker, uh, the shadows would be cast in different directions. So the general motion of this of this um, device is sort of it's it's a bit of a uh, spherical coordinate system in the sense that the tracker can move in this direction here and it can also move in the vertical direction like this. This motor is responsible for vertical, and this motor here is responsible for uh, rotational. Um, now the photoresistors that are responsible for horizontal movement uh, or rotational movement are this one here and this one here. And essentially the way this works is that if a shadow is cast on this photoresistor, it would uh, move to the left. It would move to the left in this direction. And if it were cast on the other one, it would move in the opposite direction. And for the vertical ones here, works in a similar manner. If a shadow is cast on this one, it moves upwards. If a shadow is cast on that one, it moves downwards. This is how we kept the sun tracker lined up with the sun. This is the actual code that we used. Um, essentially, this entire portion is reading in values. Uh, yeah, basically reading in values and uh, beginning commands for uh, for actual actually turning the the servo motors. Here we have the core of the Sun Tracker code, which is essentially comparing the values that we read in from the two from the uh, from the uh, diagonally paired 
photoresistors in order to determine which one is shadowed and which one is not. And based on that, we can decide which direction to turn the sun tracker. Here's a video of our sun tracker in action. All right, here's our spectrometer. It's found the sun, and now we can bring it off course by covering up one of the photoresistors in the PVC pipe. When it's in shadow, it'll start moving side to side. And then when you let it off, it'll find the sun position again. And we can also do it up and down. And we can't move the sun, but we can kind of fake it by moving the platform that it's built on. You can see even though the board is going up and down, or left to right, the tracker is holding position on the sun. And it has once again found the sun. Here we begin our data analysis code. We both plot the time lapse of the spectrum and add a, a curve fit of a projected ideal black body curve above it. There's a lot of code, so I'll have to move through it fairly quickly. But here's our plotting. We first normalize the data into a relative spectrum. And then here's an actual plot command to plot the histogram. And then it also plots the calculated black body spectrum using the Planck equation. And all this stuff is sort of things to do with the curve fitting. We're using a linear least squares fit that uh, first calculates the theoretical relative intensities for uh, a spectrum curve using the Planck equation. And then it creates this relative intensities for our set of LEDs and compares it to our actual data and then minimizes the least squares difference or minimizes the square difference between our data and the theoretical values. And then finally, we're smoothing the data to use the time lapse since we have hundreds of data points and we only need a few frames to make a good time lapse. Here's the results of that curve fitting on our previous lab tests. This was the data that we got for project two in the lab using different light bulbs, and now we've added curve fits. For the 5300 Kelvin compact fluorescent bulb, the data is uh, extrapolating a 5100 Kelvin black body, so that's fairly close, and visually the curve fit looks quite good. It's a little bit more, a little bit further off on the 2950 Kelvin incandescent bulb, thinks it's 2550 Kelvins instead probably related to our blue channel. But again, the visually the, the curve fit looks quite good. And then we ran curve fit on our sunset data to see if that would lead to anything interesting. And the curve fit does help show that the black body temperature of the effective the, the effective black body temperature of the sun decreases to closer towards sunset. You can see it begins to move very rapidly at the end. And here's the beginning and the end of sunset with the, the theoretical curves extrapolated onto them. This is uh, in accordance with conventional uh, scientific theory that the effective black body temperature of the sun is viewed from our atmosphere decreases close to sunset as it has to travel through more and more atmosphere closer to the horizon. So that was all old data. To use our new tracker, we deployed our tracker in the courtyard outside of E3. 
uh, for we did a three hour data run and you, as you can see the the trackers in one position at three o'clock and then by six o'clock it's in a very different position this is all unaided it was running completely autonomously here's the results of our tracked sun data run as you can see the spectrum is largely constant over time, except for with very brief uh, flashes of high yellow intensity relative to this. These also correspond to lower infrared intensity, and our hypothesis is that this is when clouds pass over the sensor. Uh, it was still a partially cloudy day, and the yellow LED is better at picking up diffuse light than the other ones are. So we think it correlates to cloud activity, but we would need to study this further to be more conclusive. And for our final thoughts, there's a lot of room for both refinement and improvements on some of the limitations of this project. We continue to have uh, problems with the LEDs. The, the directionality, even after we ground down the tops of them, they still are showing some directionality. And just the, the limited spectrum we get with only having five. If we added more, it would obviously help smooth out the spectrum a lot, but it would also add to the complexity of the data. Uh, the tracker doesn't work very well in cloudy weather. We had to have good sunlight to, in order for the photoresistors to have good shadows. We needed fairly strong shadows. It, uh, it, and if it was too cloudy, the um, the motors would just go hay haywire, it would keep going in an infinite circle or other un undesirable activities. And the combination of the moving parts and a large number of data wires uh, gave us a lot of reliability problems. One loose wire from the turning of the servo motors could unplug an LED and ruin an entire data run. So some ideas we had to refine and improve our tracker. If we replaced the servo motors with stepper motors, It'd give us a much finer degree of control, and we could, since the sun's path is fairly well known, or fairly well, or fairly predictable as it moves across the sky, it would really help with our, our control scheme to know where we were in our rotation. Uh, if we could remove some of the data wires by implementing the uh, recent wireless chips, that would help that with uh, loose wires and improve the robustness of our project. And finally, Software settings, uh, there's a very large parameter space for the motors. We have control over both the, the motor power, the, how long the motor runs, as well as the cyclic frequency of the entire Arduino control system. It's a very primitive control system on top of that. So it's a very rich behavior. Some, some settings gave semi-instability or sort of chaotic motion, and we didn't have time to really explore all the, the nuances of that to optimize it. We, uh, we managed to find some settings that would reliably track the sun during uh, late morning to early afternoon hours, and we went with that. But the, there's definitely some, some more complex behaviors and quirks when you start getting very low on the horizon, for example. The, the motors have to work a lot harder to overcome the torque of its, the spectrometer's own weight. So that marks the end of our final project. Um, definitely feels unfinished in a way, but <clears throat> at the same time, there's a good feeling uh, that it's done. Uh, yeah, that's the end of our final project.